red wire, black wire. Breaker, black wire, red wire. Breaker, switch, black wire, red wire. Mm. That's where it leads to. So that controls the, uh, the amount of uh, power coming in from the solar panels. And then pops it back down through those cables into the Victron Lynx shunt. Well, uh, bus bar, I should say. It's not a shunt. The shunt is down there, right there. Um, yeah, which then goes into the uh, bus bar where the battery is connected and the inverter. So it's a 24 volt Victron, Victron Multi Plus 2, uh, 3000 watt or 3000 VA, so it's about 2400 watts. It will provide an Acerbo GX uh, to control all of it. You've seen this setup before, but this is strictly my 24 volt system. Then I recently put some breakers in uh, so that I could isolate this from other uh, connections to the house. This also powers um, dishwasher circuit in the house. Don't ask me why, but that's the way I wired it up. And everything there powers everything here on the rack. So I've, I've converted the rack over to a 24 volt solar system so 24 volt batteries two of them i'll show you those here in a minute but they basically power everything on the rack and everything on this bench uh, and everything on that wall so the batteries are right down here on the floor there are two 24 volt 100 amp hour redoto batteries wired in parallel so they can provide me with other up to 200 amp hours Right, yeah, 200 amp hours, or 200 watt hour. I don't know. Up to 4.8 kilowatt hours of power. Yeah, because they're 2.4 times 100. Yeah, it's 2.4 kilowatts per battery, so 4.8 kilowatts of storage I have on here. So in theory, I could run this overnight on battery if I had to, as long as I had solar the next day, and it would still be able to power everything. Now I power all that with a thousand watts of solar panels, and I'm gonna show you those right now. They're rated at a thousand watts because they're 200 watt bifacial panels that I got from, oh, it'll come to me. I'll show you those in a minute. But basically here's everything on the wall that controls that system. So we've got the inverter, we've got the solar charge controller. I can keep adding solar charge controllers so I can put as much solar capacity on here as I wanted. The bus bar, the servo, the inverter, the ancillary connection equipment, bus bars, the the um, Victron shunt that man that monitors all the power coming in and out of the DC side of the system. So I'm kind of recording blind out here because it's so damn bright I can't tell if I've got focus or not. So then I ran the cable down under the house. So there's the red and the black go into this right now it's plumbing pipe a PVC plumbing pipe plumbing pipe and then it goes out to the to the array over here so let's go again all this is temporary there's the red and black cables they follow on down and then it's the last set of panels in this row so we'll just walk down here see if I can do this without falling in a hole yeah, all my cables are down on the ground right now. But I will uh, get them all tied up. That way the rabbits and mice don't show them. And these are the five panels that I just set up. So these are actually eco-worthy. So these are the eco-worthy uh, EC08 BM195 watts. So they're 195 watt panels. And they're bifacial. So, in other words, they are reflective. They are passed through. So you got solar cells in the back and the front. And I've got them set up with five in a in an array. So in theory, that would be 
almost a thousand watts, which should power my 24 volt system just fine. And here's my some of my 400 watt uh, panels that I bought. Got a really good deal on the wasps seem to like them for some reason, and they're just you know chugging away. And you got to be careful with this cable out here. We'll get that in short order. Then it just comes into the conduit there and over. And then, of course, I have all the panels still lined up here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen panels over there doing me absolutely no good. And then those panels, which are uh, collecting energy later in the day, usually after two, three o'clock, because of the direction they're pointed in. So there's due south. That pole across the street is due south. So they're kind of pointing south with my main array. So yeah, it's big, it's ugly, and there's nothing I can do about it because I can't afford to move those panels anywhere other than where they are right now. So they need to make me electricity. That's what I'm, that's what those panels are there for. Anything else is just, you know, window dressing. Fish your tank. So here's something I did. Yeah, I put that shelf up all by myself. Aren't I special? Still don't have any wall plates on. Okay, so there you go. There's my 24 volt system currently running the rack and uh, any regrets putting the rack here nope it's working just fine and in the winter I'll be extra special grateful because that's where all the heat's gonna come from is from that rack and uh, there you go when to come with me I'll show you what my latest project is because in the joy of home ownership you're never done working Forget the Amazon boxes. You can see. I do a little housekeeping. This is the uh, spot where Amazon boxes go to be dealt with. So there you go. There you go. You say hi to the aquarium and to the other aquarium. Okay, so. As you can see here, I got my dryer pulled out. Why? And I've got something unhooked. Why? Well, and then when I pulled the dryer out, you can see we got some dust bunnies back here. But more importantly, I ripped the hose, the exhaust hose. That's all right. This hose was a little short, need to be a little bit longer anyway. So I bought a new hose. Don't worry. I know it's plugged in, but trust me, the breaker is off see that see the 230s they're off yes okay so anyway it's the it's a little button that, that it's a little go button it's the go it don't go no more the button's broke so i'll show you the button here in a second it's really easy to get out you basically you just you lift the clip and turn it and then you pull the switch out and then unplug it, of course. And don't mess with any of these others. They appear to be, you know, they appear to be doing what they need to do. Clicking and, you know, the dryer thingy little thing. And they make it really easy to get to. There's just six screws on the back of that panel and then it comes right off. And then let me show you the switch. So here it is. Here's the switch. It's not only a switch, it's a freaking relay. It's a relay switch. So, yeah, and there is the, uh, here's the part number right there. The part number is that W number right there. It's W101165 Whirlpool. And this is uh, a Maytag Centennial 
dryer. Now we got the Maytag. It was one, it was the cheapest we could find. And dryers are a dime a dozen. And we figured, well, it's got Maytag on it. It's commercial line. All the stuff I read online years ago. We've owned that dryer about almost 10 years now. So it's been a good dryer. And so once in six or 10 years, I've had to buy a $47 switch and replace it. So do with that information what you will. Uh, but it is, uh, it's been a good dryer. So well worth repairing. I don't just throw shit away if I don't have to. So we'll get this. I've ordered the switch. It should be here in a few days. And then we'll get it installed. So the dryer is... It's all back together. It turns out it wasn't that switch. It's working now. Hang on. You heard it work. <laughs> so the switch is working now. What it was is there's another panel behind here and you always go online and check the troubleshooting manuals before you just assume it's something. That's exactly what I didn't do. Normally I do. But anyway, there, it's a known issue with these. The thermistor on here gets old from heating and cooling and heating and cooling eventually it, it just breaks and it breaks the circuit and it's basically a thermal fuse it can also happen if the dryer overheats but usually you'll you'll get something else that'll shut down before the uh their mister will anyway let me come and show you exactly what it was on this dryer anyway so i spent 47 dollars on a switch i didn't need that was brilliant i'll hang on to it because I know at some point I'll need it, but uh, that's this switch right here. So it wasn't the switch. This is the part number though, if you're ever looking. Factory certified parts, Whirlpool, Maytag, they're all the same. But this is the part I ended up needing. $47 versus $11, and you get two of them. There's a two pack. Not as a two-pack, but a two-pack of those little fuses. And here's the one that had burned out. You just take it out and you check it with a multimeter and see if you have continuity. That is, you put it in continuity mode, you put the two terminals, your wires between the two terminals and your multimeter should beep. Mine didn't beep, meaning the connection here is broke. So it acts like a switch when it breaks it won't allow electricity through, so the dryer won't start. It starts now. And I put a new dryer vent on, and I took the back off the dryer, and I cleaned the dryer, so it was a golden opportunity to fix it and fix it right, which I did. So we come onto the board and we look at the uh, statistics. You'll see now that we have something on here we didn't have before, and that was the PV charger showing us that we're making some watts on the solar side. Now, keep in mind, it's about 6.30 at night, and the sun is quickly uh, getting ready to set. It'll be set, in fact, in the next hour, I believe. So we're not going to get much more out of uh, the PV, but uh, it does power the load during the day. So I've got five 200-watt or 195-watt panels out there, and at the peak, uh, I think they're providing, well, let's go see. It looks like at the peak they're providing 0.66 kilowatt hours um, uh, in an hour. So if we go and we change this chart to for this week, we'll see that I have produced about 30 kilowatts of solar, but I've consumed 71 kilowatts in total power. So I've consumed 47 kilowatt hours from the grid since the beginning of the week and only pr produced, so I'm making about half. I produce about half of what I consume. So as soon as I add some more panels, uh, I've got another charge, uh, charge controller. I can hook onto this system. I've got a second uh, 150, 35 uh, Victron charge controller so I could have multiple sets of panels on here. So what I think I'm going to do is probably take some of those um, larger panels, the 300 watt panels that I have, I'll take four of the 100 watt panels off of one of those racks and replace it with two of the 300 watt panels. Those should produce five to 600 watts for those two panels. And then the 100 watt panels that I remove, I'll put on a different set and plug them into the uh, 24 volt system here to run my rack. So there you go. Uh, it's not like I haven't had those panels. I, uh, 
first of all, it's nice having the panels hooked up because I've been running this rack off of just regular grid power and batteries, you know, just kind of testing things. And I've had those panels for probably three months. I mean, and the rack, but it arrived late during the summer and it was too hot to go out there during the day and set them up. And uh, frankly, I just didn't have time in, uh, after the evening, you know, with work and whatnot. So I'm glad I finally got those panels installed. It's still not enough. Uh, I'm now on a mission to get those total of those 20 300 watt panels, those used panels that I bought mounted before uh, winter sets in. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go next week and order the lumber from Lowe's to make that happen. And these are going to be temporary where they're located now. I'm going to get all 20 panels lined up and get them producing. And then later, as I can afford the wire, because uh, I'm going to need two 250 feet of wire times three or four arrays that I'm going to have out there. I'm seriously considering maybe looking at converting those panels to high voltage. That way I can use a cheaper cable. But we'll see. We'll see where it happens. Right now, as it happens... I only have the, the panels I can hook up to the system I have. So long term, the goal is to get those panels out in the back of the property so they're not right there up front. But anyway, there you go. Panels are installed, and it's nice to have a dryer back. Although even this time of year, if you put on something wet and go outside for about 30 minutes, sometimes 15, it'll be dry. It'll be dry within that time frame. So it's no big deal not having a dryer in the middle of summer in South Texas. But it is nice to have that modern convenience back. But anyway, that's going to do it for now. We hope you found this video entertaining and informative. As always, please smash that like button on your way out. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos when they come out. If you care to contribute or donate, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube join function, or just become a YouTube premium member like the rest of us. For all of our social media links, you can go to unkyjoesplayhouse.com. Our website is there. It's got all our social media links, our uh, X account, everything that should be on there, including our Discord account. So thanks again for coming to see us, and please don't forget, we'll see all of you on the other side. I've been watching old Uncle Joe From Texas he to where the cactus grow Fixing service solar power in the land Hoping that his plans all stand Making life a touch more bright Underneath those southern lights